Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. This video, I'm gonna be talking about what I think is one of the stupidest hoaxes of recent times. And what's interesting is it shows you that even though it may not seem like so at the beginning, the whole thing has been started, created, and grown in order to target the word of God. It was all started in order to go finally after scripture. It's part of the primary agenda to undermine the word of God, to cast doubt into people's minds, which is, like I said in a previous video, that that is the agenda which is behind all propaganda. It's all to make people turn away, ignore, or undermine the word of God. It's an antichrist agenda and it's multi-layered and it's everywhere. If you look behind all of these things and then further behind that, you will find everything you see in the media is there to influence and disassociate its audience from God. So we have this thing called the Mandela Effect. It refers to widespread false memories People collectively believing in an event occurring when it didn't is basically something that a lot of people have remembered incorrectly. But where the problem lies is that people use these false memories to mess with your head. Their so-called Mandela effects have been spread around the internet for the last, I don't know, it could be 10 years or more. And you'll notice that most of them are silly things, silly, inconsequential things like Oh, uh, the Looney Tunes being spelt T-O-O-N-S or T-U-N-E-S or the Forrest Gump, the movie, and the quote from it, uh, life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. When the character actually says in the movie, life was like a box of chocolates, what happens is that something that is popular, like that movie, people end up re-saying the phrase, it's then said on TV in comedy sketches, it gets spread around yet it's repeated slightly incorrectly at some point. A bit like what they call Chinese whispers, a situation in which a piece of information is passed from one person to the next and it's changed slightly or distorted over time. And what ends up is that the slightly incorrect version becomes the accepted norm and people get used to it. Then they're surprised when looking back that it's not exactly the way they think it was. It's really that simple. Yet you have these so-called influencers online who will spread around stuff like this but then claim it's something to do with the paranormal or state that things have been supernaturally changed yeah or say something like son is open to time portal and these silly inconsequential things have been altered slightly forever it's complete gobbledygook right here's one example star wars the movie uh, the robot cp3o did he, did he used to have a silver leg? But people remember the robot being all gold. Truth is, of course, he always had one silver leg. I mean, if you remember the film CP3O, he spends the first part of the movie in the desert, surrounded by yellow, golden sand. So it's kind of that color is reflecting onto his leg. It's hard to see it. And loads of toys of that robot and merchandise and bedspreads and posters as well were made of the robot being completely gold. Probably because the manufacturers didn't notice it or whatever. Then because this image gets bandied about slightly incorrect, it forms this collective false memory. And now because of the internet and, and mass communication, a lot of people can share this same false memory and they all go, oh, isn't it weird at the same time? Yet there are people, intelligence, who want to take this naturally occurring phenomenon and make you think that there is some kind of supernatural event where something, some evil force has gone back and changed things in time. I mean, it's not like that some supernatural force went back and changed something, you know, actually significant. I mean, even if you're talking about a movie, it's not like the ending changed, like Luke Skywalker failed to blow up the Death Star and the evil wins in the end. It's just a silly leg of a robot. And of course, the other thing that is pushed in relation to this supernatural occurrence is that there is never an old VHS video of CP3O with an all gold body. Of course there isn't, because he never did. He had a silver leg all the time. They claim the supernatural Mandela effect. It's changed all of the old VHS tapes as well. Wow, that's crazy, man. No, no, no. It's because his leg 
was always Silver You Muppet. You just collectively remembered it incorrect, which was facilitated by the images of the robot being all gold on posters and the toys, etc. Okay? And while you may see this thing and say, oh, that's weird, oh, but it's just a silly thing. What's the big deal? Well, behind these numerous online accounts that push this type of nonsense, there is a sinister agenda behind it because all of this is pushed, in my opinion, in order for the end goal, which was to start using the Mandela effect, supernatural psyop, to mess with people's heads and the word of God. So now you have all of these agents online carrying on saying the Bible and of course it has to be of course it has to be the King James Bible as well saying oh the Bible is under attack from supernatural forces it's being changed by the Mandela effect and of course the consequence being oh now you can't trust anything that's in the Bible now because it's been supernaturally changed don't you know it's complete and utter tosh and in my opinion, all of this, this whole internet thing called the Mandela Effect was created and it was pushed using popular culture, something popular like movies and music, etc. to gain interest early on. All of this was started from day one in order to do this to the Bible. That was the goal from the beginning, in order to try and undermine the word of God, in order to cast doubt in people's minds and what they are reading. It's an intelligence psychological operation. It's why the videos about the supernatural Mandela Bible changes stating this nonsense are promoted on YouTube. It's why they get millions of views. The ones calling it out as an obvious hoax, you know, they don't get anywhere near those views. There are channels, I believe, that have been set up to push this hoax continuously. And really, I mean, anyone really should see that for what it is. This video here called The Lion and the Lamb Mandela Effect Debunked, this explains quite well this nonsense of the claim that the lion laid down with the lamb was changed to the wolf laid down with the lamb. This is one of their big claims of course as it says in Isaiah 11:6, the wolf so shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. This is very much again like the Forrest Gump or Star Wars. Modern Christianity has been pushing the idea of the lion and the lamb with images in Christian books and so forth, pushing the correct image of that Isaiah 11:6, And this has created a, collected, a collective false memory. It also shows that people are easily misled and don't read scripture. You can see old artwork. I mean, even this is inc incorrect scripture. This book, for example, things like this continue to propagate a false memory. This is why people collectively think it's the lion lays down with the lamb because over the decades, the imagery has been pushed. Say like uh, the title of this old movie. I mean, another thing that these charlatans claim is that the Bible has been supernaturally changed by Satan and every Bible has been changed. If you get a Bible from 1700, then that would also be magically altered. It's changed history. It's changed every Bible, right? Yeah, well, if that's so, why hasn't it changed these images that I've picked up on Google? Why hasn't it changed the lion into a wolf in these images? If reality has been altered and changed or shifted, wouldn't these images have also changed? Of course they would, but they haven't. No, because it's a load of rubbish and it's always been the wolf lays down or dwells with the lamb. So here we see a painting as well by Edward Hicks. This painting was done in 1833, which shows the Isaiah 11:6 correctly. As you can see, there is a wolf lying down with the lamb. It's not a lion. This artist was paying attention when he did his painting. He wasn't getting distracted by his black mirror device. This is back in 1833. So you can clearly see he has the wolf dwelling with the lamb and the lion with the calf, yeah, and so forth. 1833, that's before someone at some point did a picture with the lion and the lamb who was reading scripture incorrectly. And then that image and the concept got copied by others and duplicated and it then created this collective false memory which we now find charlatans online use to try and sow doubt and confusion into people over the word of God. 
And you remember this image I showed earlier? This, the image, is an actual painting by a person called William Strutt. This is the same scene, it's about the Isaiah verse again. And this was painted in 1896, but he's got it wrong. And this is probably where the root or the rot set in of this particular false collective memory of the lion laying down with the lamb started. Okay, now another example of the nonsense you will see was this comment on my recent King James Bible uh, video, is, is King James the go-to Bible? These people turn up, they turn up in their droves when you post a video about the King James Bible. This one says, I won't read the whole thing, but he says, the scriptures are changing just as it was prophesied in Amos 8, 11, 12. It doesn't say that at all. That's completely out of context. There's nothing there about the Bible changing. Then goes on to give these examples. The crippled man to pick up his mat and walk it now has been supernaturally changed to couch. And they didn't even have couches till the latter 1800s. Fuse, that was the man's last name who made the sofa. There is corn all over the scriptures and corn didn't come into being corn until the early 1800s. Before that, it was called maize and that came from the Americas and didn't exist in the Middle East until way later. Right, the word couch, right? Not used until 1800s is absolute nonsense. The English poet and author Geoffrey Chaucer referred to a couch as a place to sleep in his work. In 1385, the word couch was used a good 300 years before the 1611 King James. So that allegation is completely false. And then corn? He claims corn didn't come into being until the 1800s, or at least I think he means the word corn. Before that, it was called maize. No, 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 no. It says here corn was used in England as far back as 888. So that would be a good 800 years before the King James Bible. And then technically in print, the earliest known use of the noun corn is in the Old English period pre-1150, still 500 years before the King James was published. Right? In America, they didn't use the term corn until the late 1600s. But hello, the King James translation wasn't done in America. It's an English translation. So this comment is full of lies and crafty lies in order to sow doubt. They don't expect people to look into their claims. They just hope they raise doubt in someone's mind somewhere. It's about undermining the word of God. They are preying on the easily misled and the easily influence and it's an agenda it's an organized psychological operation that's being pushed by online operatives and it's been going on for years and it started originally using popular culture things like films like star wars and songs to get the concept going online so eventually they could attack and go after the bible using the same strategy that's what it's all about and here you can see where it originates right it's called the false memory phenomenon brought to you by the likes of Sigmund Freud, Freud or fraud, who was of course anti-God, considered it a fairy tale, the Bible. Freud was the founder of psychoanalysis and the principal tool or propaganda agent whose books went on to influence and screw with the minds of the public by using his psychobabble. Modern psychiatry has been used by evil parties for years to send people away who don't cooperate or fit the mold, right? The founder of Netflix, Mark Randolph, whose great grandparent was Sigmund Freud and great uncle was Edward Bernays, who they called a father of modern propaganda. That's Netflix for you. So you know you can see what that's all about. Look, here we see false memory phenomenon. In psychology, a false memory is a phenomenon where someone recalls something that did not actually happen or recalls it differently from the way it actually happened. Suggestibility, now this is the thing, suggestibility, activation of associated information, the incorporation of misinformation and source misattribution have been suggested to be several mechanisms underlying a variety of types of false memory. This is what some of these influencers are trying to do by pushing this rubbish around. It goes on to say, 
Freud was fascinated with memory and all the ways it could be understood, used, and manipulated. And these people online are attempting to manipulate collective false memories to make you think something supernatural has happened when it hasn't in order to sow seeds of doubt and undermine scripture, undermine the word of God, because the battle behind all of this, you see, is against the word of God. And that's how far in advance they plan. That's how deep this goes. And that's what the underlying agenda is always about and against. These people try and tell you it's supernaturally changed by Satan. When you know, you know God told you in scripture, his word would be preserved for generation after generation until the end. As it states, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Psalms 12, 6, 7. As always, thanks for listening. Thank you for your time. Thanks for your support. And I'll see you in the next video. Truth, it shall set you free.